All right, first, there's a couple of misconceptions that I have to go over. First of all, going to the gym won't make you a stronger player alone. You have to focus on nutrition and your fascial connections throughout your entire body to actually become a faster, stronger, and more athletic player. Being more bulky won't make you a stronger player. It will probably make you a worse player on the pitch. This explains why skinny players like Neymar Jr. and Bellingham are very strong on the ball and can body bigger players off the ball when they are smaller. It's because they have elite fascial connections throughout their entire body and they've been playing the sport for a long time, which lets their body and their muscle memory connect to make sure that they don't get bodied off the ball as often. Another misconception is that you don't have to go to the gym at all though. Of course, that's not true. When you're a footballer, most of the time that you're going to spend off the pitch is going to be recovery and maybe in the gym. So when you're in the gym, make sure that you're doing athletic movements. As a footballer, you don't want to get too bulky, so make sure you're just focusing on your core, lats, and your legs primarily. Another misconception that most players think of is that carbs aren't good for you. You should be loading up on carbs as much as you can, as that's what fuels your muscles and your brain to actually be able to move. So make sure you're eating big to play big. Alright, and the final misconception is that you can just eat whatever you want. That's false. You shouldn't dirty bulk as most people tell you in the fitness industry to do. Dirty bulking will destroy your athleticism and it will make your general health worse. Try to eat as clean as you can. Now, this doesn't mean to just never ever eat unhealthy. You're a human and eating unhealthy is sometimes is, can't be avoided. And that's completely fine. Just make sure that your diet is primarily healthy foods, such as whole foods and fruits and vegetables. All right, now that we went through all the misconceptions, I'm gonna be showing you what to do to actually get stronger. All right, first things first, I'm gonna be showing you some of my personal warmups and some of my personal exercises that I did to get stronger on the ball. The first one is what I like to call ankle raises. So you can perform ankle raises by just going on a wall like I'm doing right now and just moving your ankles up and down. Make sure that your legs are nice and straight. As you can see, make sure that you're facing forward. The reason why I'm not is I'm talking to you guys. But make sure you're facing forward and your back is straight. And so you want to make sure that you're controlling the eccentric and the eccentric. So that means to make sure that you're controlling the way down and the way up. Ankle raises really help with your trivia. Your trivia is what's responsible for moving your foot up and down along with your cap. So that's obviously going to be a really important part of football. So that's why you want to make sure that it's nice, healthy, and strong. In a couple weeks, if you do this consistently, you're going to notice that your kick strength and you're going to notice that your speed is going to increase dramatically. Next one is the calf raise. You're going to perform the calf raise by laying flat on your feet and then simply pointing your toes up, just like that. Now with the calf raise, it's a really important part and it's a really important exercise to do as most people overlook the Achilles tendon and how to actually maintain the Achilles tendon strength and flexibility. The calf raise makes sure that your Achilles tendon is not strained and it also makes sure that it's nice and flexible, which is really important. With that being said, there's a lot of non-gym related exercises that you can do that's going to help you develop your physical on the pitch. The first one is being aware of your posture. If your posture is really bad and it's not straight up and nice and relaxed with your shoulders, bringing them back, then your spine isn't going to be aligned with your entire body and it's going to make for a weaker base and a weaker structure that's going to let you get body off the ball way easier. Another thing is, is that with your posture, you want to make sure that you're straight most of the time of the day. You don't want to be lumped over at all. That's not how you're supposed to be. That's very bad for spine health. and That's really bad for back health, which will in turn lead for longer term issues if you don't correct. So make sure that you have a good posture. All right. Secondly is foot health. Foot health is utmost important as a footballer because that's your base of operation. If you have a weak foot structure and you don't have an arch, then most likely you're not going to be performing as good as you can. To make sure that your foot structure gets better, you want to do foot exercises. So you want to get a towel and scrunch it up with your feet. I'm going to put a video right here so you can see what I'm talking about. You should be doing this exercise with your socks off, but to avoid YouTube uh, taking down my channel, I'm not going to be showing my feet. Another thing is with your toe health is that you want to make sure that you're wearing wider fitting toe box cleats. Because if your cleats are squishing your toes in, that's going to dramatically affect your athletic performance on the pitch, as your feet work the best when they can splay out. And that's the reason why professionals have cleats that are literally modeled after the foot, to make sure that their toes have enough space to move around and for comfort purposes. So besides making sure that you actually like the cleats that you're in, you want to make sure that they fit properly and you don't want to compromise the feel of your boots for the look. Now, if you've been playing football for a while, your toes are probably squished together. 
So to counteract this, you want to get toe spacers. And if you don't want to spend money on weird toe things, then you can just use your fingers to put your fingers in between your toes and just try to move your fingers outwards. This will help counteract the effect that has been happening over years of you playing football. Okay, now moving on, you want to make sure that your legs are in stable health. So you want to make sure that you're doing your stretching routines as much as you can. And you want to check up on them. That doesn't mean to ask them how they are. It means that you're actually giving them the right nutrition. Okay, and also you want to make sure that your mental health is in check. Because if you're scared of going into duels and going on to 1v1s when you have the ball or when you're trying to get the ball, then you're most likely going to get bodied and you're not going to get the ball anymore. You want to make sure that you have a strong mental fortitude. You want to make sure that you think you're going to get the ball and you know that you're going to be stronger than the other player when you go for a physical challenge. Remember, football is also a mental game more than it is a physical. So there you go, guys. You don't have to be a bodybuilder to have a good physical on the pitch. You have to have good hours playing and you have to have the isolated muscle groups to be developed along with having a maintained tendon strength and maintained tendon health. With all that being said, the most important thing is your nutrition. So always make sure that you're giving your body what it needs. This has been Coach Gabriel, signing out.